Hello and welcome to Madagascar. This is a lesson that is using a mixed media with colored pencil, some watercolor and black fine liner ink as well as a digital art component that's optional. This is the photo without digital art if you prefer. Keep an eye out for a Zoom link event for a art demonstration on how to do the Canva digital art option. This is 100% um, optional, but I will walk you through this during our Zoom classroom lesson. I'm recording this outside today. So it's a windy day and there's a lot of active birds. It's a beautiful sunny day. So you might hear some cockatoos and other birds in the background. So the supplies that we're using are colored pencils. I love working with colored pencils. They're re readily accessible for most budgets and most families. Uh, we've got uh, different paint markers or black markers here. So I am, you can use Posca, you can use a Sharpie pen, you can use um, a Micron pen. Whatever you choose to use is up to you. The Posca and the Micron are more expensive and the Sharpie is um, also works. My preference is the artist quality ones, but um, Sharpie will work. You just have to make sure that it is totally waterproof because we are working with watercolor today as well. We need a couple different paint brushes, some round tops, flat top, and a pencil and eraser, and of course some art paper. You can use watercolor paper for this as we are using some watercolor paint. It's not necessary. I am just using art paper. The only paper I don't recommend is printer paper or copy paper. It doesn't have a lot of tooth, so it won't. Uh, you won't be able to blend your colored pencils um, with that. Some paper, like art paper, has a bit of texture to it, so it captures your watercolor and it captures your colored pencils, so you can blend them. I'm using Mikador watercolor paints. I've got a spare paint palette here. Um, the Mikador aren't a true watercolor. They are dye based, but I love them and the kids in the studio love them because they're so vibrant. Um, but we are overlaying them with um, colored pencil today. So it just gives a more depth, a different effect. Starting with our pencil, we're going to first do a couple of jungle vines in the corner. So we are going to be working with some um, space and depth. Other lessons we've already touched on in the previous weeks. And by overlaying these dangling vines in the corners of our composition, it just makes this indication that we're sort of in the jungle. You know, sometimes you can see like a little... Um, peering over into a landscape or out onto a lake and there's a break in the tree. So this is sort of what we're trying to indicate is there's a bit of a break in the trees and the, the canopy and there's a few dangling vines in front. So they're just a little kind of wobbly, wavy, wavy lines, not too wavy. Um, you can change the thickness, you can do thin ones, thick ones. We've got one overarching um, or rather underarching vine through the center here and that is where our lemur is going to go on and just to add a little bit more I guess illustration and realism uh, we're going to do some small dangly vine bits hanging down with some leaves so you can add a couple details here a lot of the times they're wrapped with smaller vines that are competing for sunlight so you can add some of these details to yours you can add ferns you can add what else could be hanging from them maybe some fun funky fungus or mushrooms um you know those leaf cutter ants you can do a few of those it's really it's up to you what can you find in a jungle in Madagascar um, and what can you add to your vine so these are just the designs that I'm doing here placing some leaves and vines throughout the composition okay, next we're going to draw the lemur walking across our vine here so we're going to draw light until we know it's right. So first you're going to do the back. So this is the curve of its tail and its hind leg coming around and down. That completes the tail. The back, it's this curved line. 
And then we're gonna do a little short neck and ear, which I guess is a crescent or the letter C shape. And again, another curved line and a line for the front leg. And then we're going to draw four of its legs so it looks like it's walking across this line. So we're just doing a silhouette and I will give it some white stripes on its tail just as a little clue, an illustration um, that it is in fact a lemur. So we can do it all in black and all I'm going to do is these white stripes. Okay. So now we have to think about our horizon line. Where is that going to go? Our background, our midground, and our foreground. So I'm going to do, I don't know, either a sunset or a sunrise, whichever. Um, beautiful, big, glowing sunshine orb. You could choose to do um, dusk or dawn without um, a sun in your photo. You can change it up. So now we're going to work on some perspective. Now perspective, this is a very, very introductory um, example. So we're doing a little vanishing points, a little dot on horizon a wavy line on a diagonal and instead of doing a really thin line we're going to actually expand that line as it gets closer to the bottom of the page which is indicating that the river starts way way off in the distance and it gets wider and wider and wider towards the viewer okay so it's just um, a very easy example of what perspective is and now I'm going to fill the edges of the page with some foliage and some leaves because remember we are peering through a break in the canopy and we see this lemur or uh, the viewer sees this lemur crawling across so they've snapped a quick photo. So we are creating a, um, a landscape painting but with the fun digital component we are going to create, again this is optional, but we're going to create a vintage poster. I absolutely love vintage posters. They're um, one of my favorite things of art and one day I hope to have a big, big beautiful home where I can just fill the halls and bedrooms and every nook with some really cool paintings including um, vintage art posters. So I've collected a couple um, in my travels when um, I went to Old Town Montreal and I can't wait to hang them because they're just so cool and I want to collect some more. So I thought it was going to be a fun activity and a great way to incorporate a digital art component. So again I'm just filling this up with some different shape foliage so you can look at a couple different examples on Pinterest or Google or just your imagination, some tall grasses, some ferns, some jungle leaves of all different shapes and sizes. So just um, fill, fill it up with as many plants as you think is suitable for your composition. Your composition may look slightly different from mine so just keep that in mind and whatever you think um, looks great for yours. Just doing a couple different ferns here. Ferns are probably one of my favorite plants and they're fun to draw. They're just repeated um, little leaves, but the it's good to have um, in your composition sort of tall structural plants like long grasses, broad leaf jungle leaves, and then some uh, fine detailed plants like ferns. It just makes your composition a little bit more interesting. So have a play around with different um, plant species and varieties and shapes. Okay, so the next step is to take your fine liner black permanent marker. And again, just a reminder, it needs to be permanent if you wanted to do the watercolor component. If you use any old black texta and you try to um, paint watercolor over top, it will bleed the marker. So I'm using a Micron pen, but a Sharpie brand fine liner will work. Um, and the marker, if, if in doubt, it will say permanent um, marker or permanent ink on it. If it doesn't, you may want to test it on a spare piece of paper with some watercolor paint over top. If it runs, you know it won't work. Um, this is optional. I love the bold line and you can actually see the, the border. This is a very um, 
illustrative style it's not necessarily a realism style but I really like it you can play around with um, some different techniques um, and just you know if you didn't want to do this you could really build up some contour lines using value so light versus dark shadow versus light and highlights um, but for this example, um, we're just going to demonstrate an illustrative style. So go ahead and trace all of your pencil lines and then we will get into painting. Okay, one last step before we paint, we have to erase our pencil lines. You can see I didn't actually um, do a black outline on my sun. Um, that was one thing that I like to leave sort of loose and blending into the sky with my different colors. Again, up to you. You can trace your sun if you like. You can give big, bold sun rays if you really want to heighten that illustrative style. Um, but it's really up to you on the style of sun and the sky that you want to do. You could do a nighttime sky with stars and galaxies. Um, you could do big moon, moonrise, moonset, or high in the sky. It's entirely up to you what background and sky you would like to do. Okay, so we're gonna paint. We're gonna do underlaying um, watercolor paint, and we're going to color with colored pencils over top. I'm using a flat brush. You can use a round brush for this. I just like sometimes it gives a really straight flat line that you can trace on, around your shape. I've made a custom color here in my paint palette. I've mixed some yellow, a little bit of orange, and some red to get this really warm glowing large sun. And then I'll start blending my background colors in from there. just made another little bit more orange into the top of the sun so I know I've seen photos and even when the sun is setting um, sort of the base of the horizon is this like big bold red color really really vibrant and then it sort of fades into more of a golden orange or golden yellow so that's sort of what I'm trying to achieve here and then I'm going to do the sky in some um, brighter yellows and oranges so I'm using a dry paper technique here. Um, if you're using a watercolor paper, you could try a wet on wet technique, but for this area, I am just doing a dry because it you can have a lot more, a greater control over where your paint's going to go. If you wanted to try a dry technique versus a wet on wet, you can absolutely do that with a spare piece of paper beside you of the same paper that you're currently using. And that is a good way to give it a go. And if it doesn't work, it's a total disaster, um, then you know that it won't work for your artwork. So that's always a good practice to do is have a spare piece of paper beside you. Okay, so now we're gonna start on our vines. So um, make a door set, I've got a set of 24 colors. It comes with three different greens. You can totally customize this by adding yellow, make a yellow green, adding brown, making a like a brown green. If you mix green and red together, they are opposite on the color wheel, which makes a natural shadow. So rather than adding black to it, add red to it, which is um, creating a more realistic and warm shadow. So maybe the underside of the vine, for example. But you can also add shadows and highlights with our next step, which is using colored pencil overlay. Have your spare paint palette next to you and play around with it. Add blue to the green, add yellow to the green, add brown to the green. See what kind of shades of green you can come up with. Okay, so I've got a lot of great varieties of green here. Um, the jungle will have all kinds of shades of green. So you can even add a little bit more depth and value by adding when we do our next step with our colored pencil, which I'll show you in a moment. But now let's finish the rest of our landscape. So I'm going to create um, some sort of warm landscape tones, some warm yellows and some warm browns. And then we'll get into our river or stream or whatever, a creek we want, whatever we want to call it. So I've made sort of like an olive green here, which I quite like for 
the grassland because it the sun is setting it could be um, heading into shadow perhaps so it's a little bit of a darker olive tone but have fun with your your green mixing and see what you come up with Okay, finishing off our landscape, we will do our water now. I've chosen this really lovely bright blue. Um, with our colored pencil, we can add some more details and different color variations in the water with maybe some ripples and waves. And then we're gonna color our lemur with some black paint and leave those stripes on his tail white. Okay, so you could totally leave it at this stage and call it done but I absolutely love this technique it allows you to give a lot more detail you can really build up your layers of color and value and with art you get out what you put in so if you were a little bit tired you can always take a break and come back to it for this next step um, and then again take a break when we get to the digital component and then finish it off there I think um, trying every technique I absolutely recommend it and even if you need to step away for a couple of hours or even um, sleep on it and come back to it the next day and adding some more details I think it's well worth it because it does give a lot more depth so I'm using um, some dark green some dark group blues to um, do the under shadow of the vine and I'm going to be adding this this different layers of um, value with my darks and maybe some yellow for the highlights on different areas of the leaves and where the sun will be hitting and the highlights will be hitting. Okay, so next for the landscape, the, the, the background on the other side of the riverbank, I'm going to sort of blend in where you can see the paint strokes. I'm using a warm brown, like a terracotta or a burnt sienna color, and I'm going to um, make it quite dark uh, along the horizon line and sort of blend the color across the landscape. So here you can see an area where the paint was actually lighter. I'm going to utilize that in my illustration because when you look at all the distance, there's going to be different um, color tones in the landscape. Perhaps there's a valley there or some small hills. So something could be in shadow, maybe a change in the uh, grasses that are there, the vegetation. So that's just a very... Um, neat way of incorporating your paint strokes into your illustrating style. So with the, the rock here at the, the foreground, um, I'm just going to indicate some shadows. So these are something that's really close to the viewer and you'll be able to see that there is a shadow um, underneath these little plants here on the rock face. So here I'm going with a darker green than what my paint color is and just doing really really light drawing sketch sketching strokes here just to indicate that there is some texture to the landscape some um, grasses and maybe hills off in the distance so I really love the color play with the underlying paint strokes the dark and the light and with those texture strokes over top With the water, I'm doing this like sort of squiggly random line and the lines are getting further and further apart as they get into the wider part because of course this water is closer to us. So they're really, really close together, way far away. And I'm using a slightly darker blue. Okay, so this is uh, the artwork. So you can finish it off here or you can take it to the next step further and do the digital component. If you have purchased term three during term three 2021, July, then you will have access to this demonstration in a Zoom classroom on how to use Canva to create a um, travel poster that looks like this with your uploaded artwork. So have a look out for that. And I would love to see your finished artwork as always. You can send it to my email.